Hello, welcome. My name is Matthew and this is Aaron and we're here at the Visual World Investigate Lab, part of the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences in downtown Raleigh, to teach you about one of our favorite little devices, an Arduino. What is an Arduino, you may ask? Well, it is a little circuit board that you can use to make pretty much anything you can think of. So if you've ever been interested in electronics, robotics, computer programming, any of that geeky stuff, we're going to show you step by step how you can get started in it, assuming you've never done any of it before. Using this little device, which you can pick up for about $15 and use some free software with. So Aaron, can you tell us a little bit more about this device? Yes. So this device is made by Arduino, and Arduino is an open source electronic prototyping platform. Which is essentially unforgivable jargon for a little blue circuit board that can do lots of things. Yes. Um, so this is open source, which means the plans are freely available for anyone to access and make their own copy of. Um, you'll notice that we have a lot of different Arduinos that look different. Um, they come in different sizes, they're made by different companies, and all of this is because it is open source, so anyone can access the hardware and software. Um, so a couple of different sizes I'll show you over here, so you can see to start with in our little camera, this is an Arduino Uno, made by a company that's not Arduino, um, but it's the same as the blue Arduino you saw over there. There are also other form factors. You will see this little tiny thing. Arduino makes a version called a Nano. This is actually a Adafruit Trinket Pro. Um, and then you'll see this tiny little microcontroller next to it called an AT Tiny. And you may notice on the Arduino, there is a microcontroller right here. And that's what powers this whole thing. And you can even get very large Arduinos like this. They make them in all shapes and sizes. And basically what they're all doing is they're electronic prototyping platforms. And so you can use these to make um, different robots, electronics, um, anything you can think of. So let's look a little closer at the Arduino Uno um, so you can get to know some of the functions and features. So I already mentioned there is a microcontroller chip right here. And you'll notice there's all these little silver pins on the edge. And these pins are connected to these pin holes on the top and bottom. And you'll see that they are numbered with different features, like these are digital pins. Um, and we call these pins here, despite them being pinholes, because they connect up to the pins on the microcontroller. Um, there are ground pins, there are voltage pins, analog pins, digital pins. We'll talk to you about what all that means in later videos. Um, but just know these are pins when we talk about pins. It also has a power jack over here, where you can give it external power to run the Arduino, because it is electric, so it needs electricity. Um, there's also a USB port here, um, and you will be using a fun USB cable to connect this to your computer, which is where you will access the second part of the Arduino platform, which is the Arduino IDE. And Matthew will be showing you a little bit about how to get started using the IDE. Yes, so what you need to do first is go to the website arduino.cc. That is a website for the official foundation, and you'll find at the top a link to downloads. And that is where you'll find the program that you need to get, depending upon which operating system you're using. There's one for Windows, and Mac, and Linux. And there, we have downloaded the Windows version. They all pretty much look the same. It, like I said, it's free, and there isn't much to them. So let's go through them here. Here's what it looks like. Um, there are a few buttons at the top for checking code and uploading and saving. We'll use a couple of them. And then some settings at the top as well. So let me first show you a couple of the settings that you might want to be aware of. If you click File, if you click File, and then go down to Preferences, you'll get a lot of options here. One of the first ones that might be of interest to you is the font size. So this will change the size of the text that you're going to be typing out, your code. So if you think it might be a little bit too small, you can increase that here. The other thing I would definitely consider, I would definitely recommend checking, is this one right here. It says display line numbers. Definitely check that to turn it on, and then click OK. So here now, what you see are these numbers here. They're not actually part of your code. They don't do anything. You just use them as a reference to help you know where things are. See, sometimes um, you might 
get errors. In fact, you will get errors. And the Arduino program will do its best to try to tell you where those errors are and what they are. One of the things it'll tell you is the line number. So that way, if it says there's an error on line 10, you can easily go to line 10 and not guess which line it's on. All right, so when you first start up the program, you're gonna see a little bit of code right off the bat. Um, it has, these are two different functions that are necessary to run, um, to, to send to the Arduino. But in this case, they didn't actually put any code inside the functions, just a little sentence that begins with these two slashes. When you put these two slashes in front of something, it turns it into a comment. That's code that isn't read or executed by the Arduino. It's just there for you to put little notes in, um, in case you're in, you think maybe later on you might not know what some of your code does. You can put in a comment so that future, no, future you understands what it was for. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this to begin with because we're gonna be typing it all out from scratch. All right, so. Um, before I do anything, however, I'm going to go ahead and hook up the Arduino. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to get the USB cable that came with your Arduino. It's a very typical USB cable. And plug it in. You can see some. there's a little on light that comes on on the Arduino so that you know it has power. And then my computer made a little, little chimey sound to tell me that it did detect it. If you're hooking it up for the very first time, your computer may come up with a little pop-up that says it's, it's, it's installing the device. Um, that should only take a few seconds and then it'll tell you when it's done and you're ready to go. And that'll only happen, that'll only happen once for that device. Now, the Arduino program needs to know exactly where you plugged in the Arduino into the computer. Your computer has multiple USB ports probably, and each one has a different port number. So let's figure out which port the Arduino is connected to. What you do is in the program go to tools and then scroll down to port. Now in this case you can see that it already has the correct one selected. It's going to show you all the ports that it notices that has something connected and then if it detects an Arduino it'll put Arduino in parentheses next to it. If that doesn't already have a check mark next to it, go ahead and check it. It might be a different number than mine, it probably is, but that's fine, it's not important. So now when you send code to the Arduino, it knows which port to send it to. All right, so let's begin actually typing out some code. So we're there going to, there's going to be three sections to our code, which is typical. The very first section is where you're going to declare variables. Those are little, um, little functions that you make that can be almost any name that represent something. The whole purpose of them is to make it simpler for you later to make changes. Now in this case, what we're going to do is make the first program that most people make. It's called the Blink program. All it does is make an LED blink. Now we could hook up an LED to it and make that blink, and in fact we'll do that later. But we're gonna do something even simpler to begin with. Because you see, the Arduino has, actually has an LED built into it right there that we have direct control over because it is tied to pin number 13. So if we tell it to send electricity to pin number 13, it's gonna turn on the LED. So we're going to do that, but then we're also going to tell it to blink that over and over and over. All right, so let's begin by setting this up. So if I just type out LED equals 13, that makes sense, but it's not quite enough, all right? The word LED isn't a built-in function, so we're going to turn it into one by turning it into a variable. There are different variables that we can use. Since 13 is a very simple number, an integer, we're going to use an integer variable. And all we have to do is type out INT to begin with. Now, you notice it changed color. If I typed it out a little bit differently, like maybe I use a little bit of capitalization, it's not going to change color. The color is there just to tell you, just to let you know that you typed out something that the program recognizes. So if you type it out and it doesn't change color, if you typed out INT and didn't change color, then the program is going to throw an error because it's confused, because you did something a little bit wrong. All right, so int LED equals 13. And then we have to finish this line with a semicolon. Punctuation and sometimes even spacing is very important in computer programming because you have to be very precise. The program, the computer, the Arduino cannot guess what you're trying to say. So you have to be very precise in the way you write these things out. 
because they can do different things and mean different things, depending upon how you arrange it all. All right, so let me scoot down here a little bit more and type out the first major function, which is called the setup. Before we type out the function name for setup, we're going to type out void and then the word setup. The setup function is for a chunk of code that um, only runs once at the beginning of the program and is just sort of stored in the memory. And then the program refers to it when it needs to. All right, so setup and then open parentheses and close parentheses. And now we're going to do something fancy maybe you've never used before, curly brackets. An open curly bracket in this case. All right, and if you're not sure whether that is because you probably haven't used it before, it's next to the P key on the keyboard. You'll have to use shift to hit it. Um, but when you do, it'll come up as a little little curly bracket just like that. Now, when I hit the enter key, watch very, watch very closely what happens. All I did was hit the enter key, but what it also did automatically is add a close bracket. So it uses these curly brackets to figure out where the setup code begins and where the setup code ends. So all your setup code needs to be inside those curly brackets. That means between them. Yeah, it's basically giving it a hug. Yes, that's right. So, um, what are we going to put in the setup? Well, in this case, we have, we're initiating a pin. We're using a pin, but the pins can be in different modes, and we need to tell it which mode to be in. It could be either in an input mode or an output mode. An input mode would be used if we wanted the pin to detect something or almost yeah. like listen to something. Like a yeah. little sensor. Like a little sensor. Yeah. An output mode is used when you want the pin to output electricity, to send electricity out to something like a cool little red LED, yeah. just like that. All right, so in order to use the pin mode function, we just have to type out pin mode, but we have to make a capital M in this case. That's called camel case. It just makes it a little bit easier to read words that are smushed together. If you didn't capitalize that M, it's not going to recognize it. You'll see the, the text stays black. So I'm going to capitalize that M. The text changes color. That let me, lets me know that the function is recognized and it's going to work. Now, there are two parameters that the language is going to be expecting at this point. Um, so let's begin with a open parentheses. And now the first parameter. The first parameter needs to be the pin number. Well, we could type 13 here, but we created a variable. So let's just type in the word LED because that stands for 13. Um, after that, you put a comma and then the next parameter. The next parameter is going to be either input or output. But and in this case, of course, we want it to be output because we're putting out electricity. Now, you would ex this is supposed to change color. The reason it didn't is because you need to shout it. It needs to be all caps. Yes, in computer programming, there are going to be many instances where you actually get to use the caps key. And it is okay. It is expected. So you, you type out output, you yell it if you want, and then end it again with a semicolon. And we're done with the setup. Now for the last section of this, of this program, which by the way is called a sketch. That's Arduino jargon for a program. The last part of this sketch is called the loop. This is going to be where the chunk of code is that is executed from top to bottom, and then when it's done, it executes it again and keeps going in a loop. If that wasn't there, then the blink would only happen one time. We want the blink to happen over and over. So void, loop, open parentheses, close parentheses, and then open curly bracket. By the way, those parentheses are there because technically you could put some parameters inside of them, but we don't need to, so we're just leaving it blank. So we've got the open, open curly bracket, hit the enter key. Notice that closed curly, bra curly bracket is, was entered in there automatically. We're going to leave it there and make sure that our loop code is between those two curly brackets. Very, very important. So the first thing we're going to do is tell the LED to turn on using a function called digital write. And that's because the, the pin that we're using is one of the digital pins. So digital write with a capital W open parentheses, and now it's going to expect two parameters. It's going to expect the pin number, which we saved as L, the variable LED, comma, and now we have a choice of either high or low. Well, we want to turn on, so you're probably guessing it's high. In all caps, so high. And then close parentheses and semicolon. Now, 
we want it to turn off. But if I just tell it to turn off now, it's going to blink so fast that you're not going to see the blink. Because even though this tiny little processor and this little $12 board here is running at a paltry 16 megahertz, I believe, um, it's still faster than you can see. So we need to put a delay in there. We need it to pause. We need it to turn on and then wait. To do that, we use a function called delay. And delay expects one parameter. It expects the amount of time you want it to delay for. Well, I'm going to put in the number 500. Close parentheses, semicolon. Now, what does that 500 um, represent? It represents milliseconds. The Arduino keeps time in milliseconds. And 500 milliseconds equates to half a second. So we're going to turn on the LED, pause for half a second. Now let's turn it off. You know, the, the code to turn it off is very similar to turning it on. Digital right, LED, and instead of high, it's going to be low. Close parenthesis, semicolon. And now we're just going to put one more line in here. We're going to put another delay. If we don't, then it's going to go from low to high immediately. And that will not look right. So delay, open parentheses, 500, close parentheses, semicolon. All right. And so then that's it. Um, let's see here. So we told it where it's going to go. And now all we need to do is send it to the Arduino. The way that we do that is with one of these buttons up here. That's the one with the little arrow in it. And it says upload. So I'm going to click that. And then keep your eye on the Arduino. Because the first thing to program, oh, back up for a second. When you do this for the first time, this window is going to pop up asking you to save the sketch. So you can give it a name if you want or just leave it as it is. You'll only ask that the first time. From then on, you're going to have to tell it to save manually. All right, so I hit save. Now you'll notice the first thing it's doing here is compiling the sketch. What it's actually doing is it's checking the sketch and then it's turning it into, into something that the Arduino is going to understand and then send it to the Arduino. Once it starts actually uploading it, it's going to say upload and then you're going to see lights on the Arduino begin to blink because there are some transmit and receive lights here, TX and RX. So we'll see that here in a moment. Um, this usually takes a little while. Um, the slower your computer is, the older it is, the longer this process is going to take. It will always take longer, however, the first time that you do it. Or if you're doing it live. Yes, or if you're doing it live. It, then it will definitely take a lot loader, longer. Okay, there we go. So it uploaded, you saw the transmit and receive lights or the receive lights blinking, and now we've got our pin number 13 blinking on for half a second and then off the half, for half a second. So if you followed us through with this, then congratulations. You just wrote a program for an Arduino for the first time. Good job. And if you've never done coding before, congratulations. Yeah. You've done coding now. It can be as simple as this. Um, but so that's it for this sketch. Aaron, tell us a little bit more about yeah. what they can expect and what they need. So this was your first sketch. Great job, everyone. Um, next time, you'll be turning this into an actual circuit using LEDs and breadboards and wires and maybe buttons and resistors and all kinds of other weird sounding things, but we'll tell you what they are and show you how to do it. Um, so if you don't have any of these parts at home and you're asking yourself, where do I get these? How do I do this myself? Um, we have links down below to some different kits and they range in price from about 30 to $50, um, depending on what comes with them, but they'll come with an assortment of sensors and motors and other things that we'll be using throughout this series. Cool. Well, that's very nice. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone, here at the, and from here at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences in downtown Raleigh, at the Visual World Investigate Lab. We thank you, and we look forward to teaching you again in the next episode, which should be available right now. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye.